Perfect. All right, it is Carco and Carney, the world's only food podcast recorded in a car, except today it's not, it's not actually recorded in a car. <laughs> we're, we're inside Epic Deli. I'm here with Stavros from the Atlas Moth. Epic Hello. Deli, a, a place that gave you your own sandwich. It's, it's our week. second sandwich, too. Is we, it really? We've had a Kuma's burger, so this is our, uh, this is our second sandwich name. If you like meat and you like metal, you're going to love the Atlas Moth. That's how it goes, I think. And I should mention this episode is brought to you by the fine folks at Boost Mobile. Check out what they have, their phones, their, their plans. I get unlimited text, talk, and data for 50 bucks a month. You, you can't beat that. Uh, so thank you, Boost Mobile, and thank you, Stavros, from the Atlas Moth for being here. Thank you for having me. It's Car Con Carne. And now here's the star of our show, James Van Alstom. All right, so let's, uh, I guess let's backtrack. Uh, the Atlas Moth has been around for 10 years. 10 years, yeah. Uh, as of uh, last, this April, was past April, it was 10 years. So tell me what the scene was like then. I mean, the world was in a kind of a fucked up place. It was yeah, the well, recession. Really was. It was. Yeah, yeah. The music- uh, Obama wasn't in office yet, I don't believe, right? He right. was 2008. Right? Exactly. I don't I don't pay attention to politics, number one, so we'll just skip past that well, anyway. Well, but, well uh, as we're recording, we're about to go into World War Three. So right, right, yeah. Might be so, a good time to jump on. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I looked at it this morning, and I was like, the first three things on Google were like, you know, nuclear war, intimate. Nuclear war is not going to happen. I'm like, I can't read any of this. I'm just going to wait. You know, uh, listen, if the, if a nuclear bomb kills me, it was meant to be. You right. know, like that's how it goes, right? But remember, don't look at the flash. Is that the thing? Right, because you'll go, you'll go blind. Oh, well, that's good to know. Thank you, Jay Zanos. <laughs> uh, Happy to oh, help. Everything's working out now. <laughs> like, All right, so 2007. 2007. The world, the world was weird. The world was weird. Yeah. Uh, there was only like a couple bands really in Chicago in like the whatever doom metal scene or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we were kind of like, hey, we can do this. You know, I just gotten out of a band uh, that I was in since high school. It's really not worth mentioning, you know. Uh, but I was like in my early 20s and that, that still was happening and it finally ended. And I was like, well, what do I do? And uh, I was dating a girl and I hated her. And I was like, you know what? I should probably quit my job and dump this girl and start a band. So he hit, hit the reset button. That was it, man. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I quit my job at a hospital I had for years that I was doing really well at. Broke up with a girl. I kicked her out of the house because she was a terrible human being. And I started a rock and roll band. And here I am, 10 years later, still have the rock and roll band. So, but, so talking about when you started the Atlas Moth and how there weren't many doom metal bands around, I mean, was the city welcoming? Oh, no, not at all. See, uh, that, that, was, <laughs> that was my expectation. I, that was kind of a leading question. Right. So, you know what? The bands that were around at the time that I can recall was a band called Minsk. Who has uh, Sanford? Who had Sanford Parker in it? Who's uh, just recorded our new record? Actually, mm-hmm. um, they were more from Peoria, but he was the Chicago connection for them. He lived up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was Yakuza with Bruce Lamont, sure. who was you know like he's the mayor of Chicago as far as music goes. And uh, there was a band called Remember Razor Red Lantern, and they were all kind of like in this little world. You know, the Razor Red Lantern guys did like uh, Emperor Cabs, you know, and uh, you know Sanford recorded all the bands, and Bruce worked at Empty Bottle, and he got everyone the shows and. You know, the, these guys were all basically the only opening bands and all these touring bands, gigs coming through yeah. town. And I had the bright idea, which actually kind of worked, was like, hey, you know what? Uh, all these guys are only playing shows opening up for bands coming through on tour. Maybe that's what we should do. You know, I kind of like, uh, I always quote American Beauty. You know, the project an image of success. Yes. You know, until you are successful. So that's all we did. You know, we wouldn't play local shows. We'd only open up for the touring bands coming through here. And we wouldn't ever do like a local showcase or anything. We never did any of that. So we, uh, you know, we elbowed so our way in. calculated risk. It was, absolutely. And we elbowed our way in, and everybody, except for Bruce Lamont, liked us. Everyone else hated our guts. Like, even his bandmates hated us. Because we were just like some young kids that didn't know anybody. And these guys all were like the scene. You know, there's like 15 guys. Well, and swagger is such a big part of rock and roll. 100%. Yeah, yeah. You got to go there and like, you know, kind of, you know throw it down you know you're gonna have a little swagger to it exactly but it, it seems like things really clicked and it, you know the atlas moth of then isn't necessarily the same as we're getting now no absolutely not no we've grown up quite a bit i mean i, I see lots of names and sounds tossed around when discussing your band the deftones come up and psychedelia comes up like you've it, gone a little weird. bit off that original mark absolutely yeah well you know we started i think that we were all trying to be like i said like this doom stoner band you know but uh as we've gone on, you know, I think we've realized that we're just not that band. We're not really good at doing that. <laughs> you know, like, I think we started out like, yeah, well, we're a Doom band. We sounded nothing like Doom. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, you just kind of grow up and you get a little bit older and uh, you kind of, um, you know, 
try some different things, and we don't really fit into any box, which has always been kind of the plus. All right, so Tyler Wildey, uh, the owner of Epic Deli, has just joined us at the table inside Epic. It is always a fascinating tour <laughs> down food lane when Tyler brings out food. Uh, what are we looking at here, Tyler? Wait, you know, let's put this on the Facebook. You want to grab a seat? Ah, uh, sure, sure. I, it smells good. I, it does I, smell good. Yes. I, I think we're looking at some pickle chips. I don't want to spoil anything here. Yeah. And I yeah, no spoilers. Yeah, Stevers, I work. wish I wish I traveled with a millennial, um, because <laughs> I, I cannot type fast enough on my phone to oh, do dude, this stuff. I'm not a millennial. I believe I'm like I think 83 is like the oldest millennial. I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. Is what they say. Although I have two older siblings that put me in the generation before. I think. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty good at typing, but also I have the old school ideals. Cool. I'm re- very well rounded in this. <laughs> All right, hang on. At Epic Deli with Stavros. Don't s- see, I, every time it's Stavros. Come on. <laughs> it, it's like my, my the thing auto- is, though, is that you'll never forget the name. My um, oh, at Epic, now it auto corrected to at Epic Deli with stage is. Like, <laughs> are Hellenic words not part of the? the oh auto-correct? no, no, no. They are. They're trying to keep us down, man. Yeah. The iPhone is not a fan. Oh, it's not even an iPhone. No, it's the Samsung Galaxy S8, which is a remarkable piece of uh, engineering. Wait, hang on. The <laughs> <laughs> Atlas Moth. I'm, like, trying to hold back. A I know, dude. One hang on. Things. Check <laughs> out the food or the doof. You know? <laughs> the doof. You know, I have not been drinking. Uh, all right. Here Yet. we go. Yeah. Nut is still young. That's right. Okay, here we go. I have a long drive, though. All right, so... We're almost there. All right. Hello, Facebook Live. I'm inside Epic Deli uh, with Stavros from the Atlas Moth. Oh, hi. Right. Uh, hi. Is this a picture or a video? There he is. Hey, uh, okay. there he is. Stavros from the Atlas Moth. Hello. The, the long-running, much-beloved uh, metal band. And here at Epic Deli is owner Tyler Wildey, a madman, a mad genius, a scientist of food, <laughs> a, a, a man whose food creations uh, are, are spoken of in legend and song. Tyler, what are, what are we about to eat here? Um, I brought you guys out something simple, just some uh, pickle chips, some pinko-crusted pickle chips with some garlic dill sauce, and then our loaded tots, which is our homemade chili, tater tots, and nacho cheese. Fairly simple, okay. but yeah, fairly simple. Just, a little, just, a, just a little starter, <laughs> you know? That is actually very simple. Yeah. yeah. I keep catching glimpses of the monitors that have all the different specials up there, and as he's saying, this is simple, this is very simple. <laughs> yeah. That's like, you know... Calculus. Oh, it's going to get crazier. Down here. It's going to get crazier. It's just, you know, I figure I start you off easy. Yeah. Easier and way then we'll go into the sandwiches. Okay. Now, speaking of sandwiches, there is an Atlas Moth sandwich. It was a special at yep. Epic Deli. And I'm going to make one for you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And then I'll make one of the JVO sandwiches, too. So, yeah, cool. Stavros you can try no you in sandwich form. Sandwich. I'll be damned. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's on the menu. It's uh, like an open face pulled pork sandwich on cornbread. And <laughs> you sound delicious. Coleslaw and fried pickles and pork belly. Okay. You it's very it. good. Okay. All right. So we're going to dig into this. Uh, t- tell us again what's on the Atlas Moth. Um, it's a uh, fried chicken breast, uh, roasted red pepper hummus, gyro meat, tzatziki. Uh, there go. There's the Greek. There's it's the Greek just stuff. like me, actually. Yeah. It's everything I'm made of. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's got a little uh, cucumber salad or like uh, Greek salad, you know. And then, sounds uh, amazing. Yeah, it's got all kinds of good stuff on it. And then uh, it's got some devil's lettuce, we called it. It's like uh, spicy lettuce. Because if you're metal, the devil's lettuce is what you got to eat. That's how it goes, man. Right. So yeah. if you're Greek, you got to have the tzatziki sauce. And if you're metal, you got to have the devil's lettuce. And basically made of feta cheese. <laughs> yeah. It's basically a thing. Right. So that or tzatziki, it's one or the other, you know. So. All right. So, uh, Stavros, not to put you on the spot, uh, but try something. I, well, I did. Well, for, I for the camera, I'm going to do it again. Just for the Facebook community, though. I don't want to. This isn't for me. It's for the kids. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I'm going to eat the fuck out of those things. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of fuck eating tonight <laughs> at Epic Deli. Uh, I'm going to try the loaded tots. Here we go. Get in there, buddy. I'm going to do it, too. Loaded tots. Wow. Here we go. Loaded tots. Merks? Is it uh, No, just nacho cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a load of top right there, my friend. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so we are going to be here at Epic Deli for a while recording a podcast. We're talking about <laughs> and eating all mall. of this food. Yeah. Um, <laughs> somehow we're going to have to drive away tonight. Um, but we'll check back in on Facebook Live with Tyler and Stavros as uh, Tyler continues to ply us with Epic Deli's fine food creations. Tyler, 
I adore you. Thank you, Tyler. And I, you guys. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're talking about how your sound has evolved. Yes, absolutely. It, it, how maybe at some point you decided, yeah, we're not a doom band. Maybe well, that's another thing. It, you were, were you too restricted to uh, boxed in by that idea? I think so, man. Well, I mean, I think that like we, I think we said we were going to be a doom band, but even that just never was our thing, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we were a bunch of guys that liked doom. You know, um, at the time, I think if you're going to start a, a metal band from fresh at that point. Um, that was probably the type of style to get into. It yeah. was like it was coming up kind of in the underground. And, you know, you don't want to go for something that's already at its peak because everyone was looking for what's just starting, you know? Like, so Doom was definitely a great start off because we were all big fans of all the bands. And we just never were very good at playing 10, 12, 13 minute songs, you know? We really like choruses and mm-hmm. we really like uh, bridges and intros. And I have ADD. You know, like I see a blinking light, and I'm like, "Oh, what the hell is that all about?" You know, I could be yeah, doing I brain surgery. Can't believe we've been sitting here for ten minutes. It's because of the food. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, like, that's one of those things, you know. Like, um, so as we've kind of gone on, I think we've just—I don't really think we're anything. I think we just kind of sound like us, which is like kind of what everybody says about us. So I'm just kind of going with it, you yeah. know. Like, you've synthesized a lot of these different elements, and it's your own sound. Yeah, everyone. Uh, I think someone wants to. One review we got for our last record, I think, was. Uh, Trying to describe our sound was like nailing Jello to a wall. I love that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with that. That's, Every, uh, everybody loves Jello. Who doesn't, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so something clearly has connected. I mean, you've been able to tour relentlessly. Yeah. <laughs> I think overseas. Yeah, we've gone everywhere. You know, um, God, our last um, album touring cycle. I think we had to do something like almost 200 shows in a year and a half. Jeez. And the last album was two years ago. The last album was going on four years ago. Oh, my God. Came out in June of 2014. Yeah. We took a pretty extended break. Uh, not really a break, actually. We never really did it. We didn't really not do the band. Um, we did a billion shows. in tw- we album came out in June 2014. We didn't stop touring until November 2016. Did you guys- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, no, or November 2015. Did the guys still like each other after the... We kicked out our drummer. <laughs> <laughs> um, we kicked him out at the end of 2015. Um, and 2016, we basically spent writing, you know. Uh, we played one show. We got a new drummer, um, who's how we know Tyler. You know, we played one show. And we just really put our effort into writing a record, you know. Um, we all started this band when we were either... You know, I think our youngest dude was 19. Wow. And our oldest was like 25, or something like that. And here we are 10 years later, you know, I'm 34. Everyone is in their 30s now. So it's like, you know, you really can't keep going at it doing 200 shows a year. No. After a certain, I mean, no one does it. Everyone just assumes people do it or they just don't care about what the band does outside of their own city. But you got to like, you know, being in the industry, you have to look and be like, oh, hey, you know what? These bands don't do that. Right. You know, and at this point, I think with, um, you know, Facebook Live or, you know, Instagram and Snapchat and YouTube and all this stuff, People uh, don't really go out there and follow bands like they used to because I, I know you could probably relate to this. There was a point where the only way to know about your band, your favorite band, was to go see them. Yeah. You know, their website got updated once when they put out a new record, and that was three fucking years ago. Seriously. Man. You know, like nowadays, like everyone knows that I'm here at Epic Deli right now. Right. You know, like, so I mean, uh, <laughs> that's like a whole new world to me, you know, like, and, um, well, how, how important is it to, Give back that kind of access to your audience. I, I think I think that um, I have a, like a really love hate relationship because I am the fan. Mm-hmm. I was that kid that was sitting there, you know, trying to figure out what the hell these guys were doing right now because it's been two years they haven't have a record out and I don't know if they're in the studio. You know, like are they broken up? So part of me wants to give that to the audience. The other part of me likes the mysterious yeah. aspect of it. So I try to write a line. I don't think you knowing everything we do every day of the damn week is important to us. So people actually come up to me like, hey, you guys still a band? It's like, yeah. Like, but you know what? It's Wednesday. You know, like, I'm watching, you know, wrestling on TV with my girlfriend and my dogs. I'm ordering a pizza. and That's I'm not, the American dream right there. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm, you know, you don't need to know this. You don't need to, like, hey, I went to Target today and got some new boxers. That's literally what I did today, you know, like. You don't need to know that, and and we're have always been such psychopaths about not letting out music before it's done. Right. You know, first impressions, everything. So we don't post little clips, and we don't do little videos that often. You know, of us I, doing. I stuff. agree with that. I, yeah, that, that strategy makes sense. Absolutely. And like, what anybody actually remembers the thirty seconds you heard on the internet? Like, come on. You know, like it's it, that's that's for putting it up there. But 
I don't care to do it. I'd rather be mysterious about it. I think in the world that we're living in, uh, we've always gone against the grain, and we've always kind of been the weird band that never really fit into a box, so why fit into a box now? I agree. You know, like, let's keep it a little mysterious. Yeah, let's let people it, wait. It served you well. Yeah, it really has, you know, and it's kept my kept my sanity through it all, which is which is a big thing, you know, because like, you, can, you can get kind of out there doing this kind of thing for 10 years. So uh, knowing that you don't want to give away too much necessarily, if the last album is four years old, where are you at now? Is there, is there stuff on the way? Oh, yeah. We're mixing it right now. We got nine songs coming out. Uh, February 9th, 2018. That's awesome. So the wait is over. You know, a couple of these things, too. Um, I mean, in that time frame, uh, my father passed away. So there's a lot of that. My mom passed away a couple years before that. So, you know, this is life. Yeah. Shit happens, man. You know, like when you uh, your your band is important to you and it's so important to me. It's like, you know, it's got it's opened so many doors. And let me do so many incredible things. Just playing my guitar and singing to a microphone, you know, but life happens. Yeah. You know, when you have to figure out how, how to get rid of your parents' house, because they're both passed away, that takes up a considerable amount of fucking time, man. Time like, and just emotional energy. Absolutely, you know. And, um, and you know, it, it's something that I don't think a lot of people understand. Be like, oh, where were you guys? It's been four years. Are you guys like, are you guys just gone? It's like, you know what? I don't have time to sit there and work on this every single day right now. Yeah. yeah you know what? I'm going to hit pause on this. And we still got together on road every week. But, like, was I necessarily, like, pushing to get a record done? Not really. You know, like, I have a brother and sister that I had to be there for. Yeah. You know, and, and this goes with everybody, you know, in our band. Like, things have happened, you know. Like, we've had to push things back. And we were supposed to record fall of last year. It didn't happen, you know. Then we were supposed to record in January this year. Didn't happen. We weren't ready. We yeah. weren't. And you know what? Wait. I used to wait all the time. You know, like, exactly. it's fine. You know, like, we'll be back. And you'll probably miss us. So here we are, you know, like, and this is like now I'm starting to do my little, you know, my media stuff. So I'm getting back out there. I'm trying to get my feet wet again, talking to everybody. You know. <laughs> You're doing a fine job. Oh, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. I'm trying my best. Uh, so let's talk about what's really important. Yeah. <laughs> you really mentioned fun. sitting on your couch watching wrestling with your girlfriend. Uh-huh. Did you grow up watching wrestling? I went to uh, WrestleMania 2. No way. In how, Chicago. how old were you? I was three. That was my first wrestle. Actually, I have a great way to, you want to segue. I'm going to segue the shit out of this for you. I went to WrestleMania 6 in Toronto, Canada, which uh, I don't know how deep of a wrestling guy you are. I mean, this is the this is the prime time. This is Ultimate Warrior Hulk Hogan, mm -hmm. right? This is the big deal right now. So this is happening. My, I was in my I was in first grade, and for all you kids out there, you don't remember, remember such things. <laughs> you used to be able to call up things to order things on a credit card, and if your mom said it was okay to use the credit card, the people on the other end would be like, "Oh, okay, no problem," you know. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents taught me a lot of independence. So I was five years old. Oh, I'm boy. watching wrestling on a Saturday. Pops up, buy tickets for WrestleMania 6. No call 1-800-WrestleMania, you know. Her. So I write down on a crayon and some piece of paper I have laying around probably. I run in the kitchen. I ask my mom, like, hey, can we go to WrestleMania? <laughs> you know, I didn't need to tell her where it was. Right. She okay, yeah, sure, we can go to WrestleMania. You know, like. So I called the number, gave it to my mom. No and I was way. like. Yeah, he can use the card, you know, blah, 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 blah. So he put me back on the phone. She made me order three tickets, WrestleMania. They show up a couple weeks later for Toronto, Canada. My mom, you know, once again, suburbs of Chicago is like, what the hell uh -huh. did you just do? You know, like. That's amazing. So they wind up taking me to WrestleMania 6. Main events, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior. I'm a Hulk Hogan fan. Hulk Hogan loses, which later I find out was the film Suburban Commando. And I'll never forgive him for that. Yes, him being a racist is a real issue, but no, his real problem starts at Suburban Commando. So he loses the belt. I cry the entire drive home from Toronto oh to Chicago. Because, you know, back then you just drove. Mm -hmm. My dad was a trucker. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Cry the entire way home. My mom says, you're never going to be allowed to go back to Canada if you keep crying. I don't give a shit. Hulk Hogan lost the world title. My life is ruined. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Fast forward to 2010. We were on our first time we were in Toronto. Onto a, onto a coalesce and Harvey Milk. I got it, okay. We're on stage in Toronto. We're in between a couple songs. We're all tuning. I'm like, oh, this is dead air. It's probably I should talk and say something. Now, my band is not like wrestling. They don't really even understand my, you know, uh, my love for it. But I'm like, hey, you know, I've been in Toronto once before, and it was for WrestleMania Six. <laughs> and this entire place couldn't give a shit about right. us. So we're the first band. No, we just had a record come out. No one even knows who we are. 
I swear everyone at that bar that was not paying attention turned and looked at me like, wait, what's he talking about right now? <laughs> so I told the whole spiel, like I just told you. And then, of course, I ended with like, and now I'm in Toronto and I'm having a great time, you know? Like, and I did call my mom before the show to tell her that I was in Toronto. That's amazing. Um, three weeks later, we were at South by Southwest. Chris Bruni from Profound Lore, who was our last record, put our last two records, comes up to me and goes, hey, I heard you were at WrestleMania 6. And I was like, yeah. He's like, a couple of my friends were at your show. I tried to make it, but I figured I'd see you down here. But I was at WrestleMania 6, oh too. Oh, God. Fast forward to a year later, we were signed to his record label, and I made him call my mom and tell him, tell her that the reason that we are friends and that we know each other was because I went to WrestleMania That's amazing. 6. So there Just you go. because you opened up your mouth at the show. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so that was literally the connection. That's how we got signed to Profile One. Isn't that so rock and roll, just oh. the randomness of the industry? Absolutely. I've made more friends in music through pro wrestling and comic books than I have anything else. Uh, so let's jump around. I have in my living room wall-to-wall comic books that uh, my wife has been very tolerant of for She's a good woman. for decades running. Uh, what, what hook do you win? Um, I wanted to draw as a little kid. My mom actually have it in my car right now and I let a, a friend borrow it who moved and I was like before you fucking move you give me that goddamn book back and it's how to draw the Marvel way yeah that, it's a classic yeah so I have that book in but my that's car that's been around since I was a kid yeah it's been around forever uh, actually my good friend Jeff Whitehead who uh, is in Twilight the black metal band I do he's on the uh, cover of Skater Die 2 as well very uh, popular tattoo artist he learned to draw the same way that's amazing yeah uh, so that, was, that was, was like John Romita or John Buscema. Like it was Romita. I'm pretty positive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, and that's the stuff I love. I love Kirby. I love Romita. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's I grew up that 70s Marvel comic stuff is my bread and butter. Me man. too. I love it. It's uh, so good. Uh, Defenders TV show on Netflix. Where do you stand? I'm excited. Um, I felt like um, holy crap. Wow. Hold that thought. We're talking about the Defenders. We got to pause because Tyler has returned with uh, what could very well be the death of both of us. Yeah, I think this is it. <laughs> this is. I've uh, seen the light, and I'm going to go towards it. Oh, my. Oh, what is this? Is that my sandwich? Is that? That's my sandwich. Yeah. Here's, this is the Rocky Balboa. That's a Philly. All right, hang on. Tyler, grab a mic. Okay. Grab That's a mic, your man. sandwich? <laughs> this could kill you. This could kill me. All right, hang on. Yes, we're <laughs> It worked. We are live at Epic Deli. There's Stavros from the Atlas Mall. Hello. There is Tyler Wildey, the owner of Epic Deli, and he's radiant because the sun is behind him. Yeah. You look like almost Jesus. ethereal. Yeah, yeah, it's the whole thing. Yeah, you are the Jesus of the table. Uh, and really, this could he be is our... feeding us, right? right? And this could be our last supper. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah, very well. He just turned, you know, baskets into food or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I've got to set my phone down. i got to put my headphones on. Boom. All right, Tyler, uh, grab the mic. Tell us what you just laid upon us here. Uh, I brought out a bunch of different sandwiches for you guys to try. Uh, I got the JVO sandwich, of course. Yeah, the JVO. Uh, this is a, a favorite at Epic Deli. You can't yeah. even get to what's under there. There's so much stuff here. Yeah, it's so, got uh, pulled pork. Uh, yeah, pulled pork, cornbread, uh, country fried pork belly, deep fried pickles, coleslaw. It's got a Carolina mustard barbecue sauce. I still uh, love that bacon. sandwich. It's, it's got some honey on the side. Stavros's eyes just bugged out of his yeah. head when he saw He's this sandwich. He's been taking at it a little bit. I have just been. waiting for I'm, this live feed to, to work. Yeah, this, the uh, Facebook Live was fucking with me right now. I'm going to have an issue with that later. <laughs> I'm ready to complain. All right? Is what's gonna happen. It took a while to get the Facebook Live up, and the food's just been taunting Stavros. It's been killing me right and now. And then I brought an Atlas Moth sandwich for you to try. So um, this is, tell, tell us again, this is ch- uh, fried got, chicken? Yeah, fried chicken breast, uh, roasted red pepper hummus, grilled gyro meat. <laughs> um, it's got <laughs> Greek salad, spicy lettuce. All kinds of good stuff. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> Not and like then, me. Uh, this one we call the Rocky Balboa, and it's our Philly cheesesteak. It's just uh, it's shaved prime rib, uh, oh onions, green peppers, provolone. And then this is our one of the specials from this week, which is the last day for it today. And it's uh, two burger patties, uh, American cheese. It has a uh, maple bacon compound cheese, bacon, uh, fried egg, <laughs> and then it's on um, two... Uh, Apple cider donut waffles that we get from a, a local farm, and then we just take the, the donuts and make them into waffles. Tyler, I saw this <laughs> on your Instagram, which is a must-follow, by the way. Be oh, literal you. food porn. Um, I saw this on your Instagram, and I had to share it because it, the thing about Epic Deli food, you read the ingredients and you think they're going to stop at some point. Never. You think, okay, well th- that's enough for a sandwich, and then it keeps going. It's like, oh, the the, the two quarter-pound patties, making it a half pound. And then there's the fried egg and the cream cheese and the bacon 
And then it's in between two apple cider donuts. waffle donuts. Why not? And just just to really sweeten the pot, a uh, side of hash browns. Why not? Uh-huh. Hey, why not? I mean, as one does. All right, so Stavros, try the JVO. I'm going to try the JVO. I, I'm delicious. Um, is there a, okay. We are here at Epic Deli. Yeah, is just get a, in there. Is, yeah. yeah, okay. I didn't know if there was like some sort of. I think Josh Pater asked the same thing. If there was a way you should attack it. Well, here I'm. Didn't <laughs> I think everyone? You know. I don't really think there's much of an attack. I think it's just basically. Yeah, just getting in there. Yeah. yeah there's yeah, a lot. Country there's, fried pork belly is fantastic. Oh, thank you. It thank is you. so good. This pulled pork is out of hand, and these pickle chips are some of the best I've ever had. I so. agree. I totally. I love the fried pickle chips here. Yeah, so oh. good. Thank you guys. I hate coleslaw. I like this coleslaw. I feel the same way. I, I don't love coleslaw, but in context, like with that, I yeah, think it's absolutely. amazing. I love it with pulled pork. I yes. Think it's really the thing. Um, and then why not put some fucking bacon on it? Why not put some fucking bacon on it? Hey, why not? Yeah, fantastic. All right, so I'm going to try the uh, Atlas Moth. Here, so we're trying I'll each get other. You. All right, here I am. Okay. I, what's the strategy for this? Oh, just, I just went in for it. Get in there. Yeah. I, I, mouths don't work like this. Uh, with that shitty attitude, they don't. You know? That's <laughs> Get in there. Guy, you got to do a little Guy Fieri in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was an unfair move. <laughs> Making him laugh mid bite. Wow. That is a trip to Flavor Town. <laughs> <laughs> what is, is it on like Donkey Kong or something? Yeah. That's he's, the, he's the mayor of Flavor Town, <laughs> JVO. That, that's like a donkey punch or whatever it is, Guy Fury. He says <laughs> a donkey punch. I think that's out of bounds. That's what he says. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what he says. Oh, this is I love. Stop, Russ, Put your uh, glasses on the back of your neck. Oh my god! This is, <laughs> I will not do that. <laughs> and look, and look how thick this chicken is. It's the way it's oh, done. Yeah. It's oh, Greek. It's best. It's as great. my father would say. <laughs> it's Greek. It's best. <laughs> now, Samaras, did you grow up eating a lot of Greek food? Was Only your Greek family food. like intensely Hellenic? Um, my mother was actually from the south side of Chicago, but she was also from a an Asia of uh, women, I believe, that kind of uh, adapted to their husbands' mm-hmm. flavors, right? You know, like so. Yeah, pretty much. Um, ate a lot of Greek food growing up. A lot of goat milk. Mm-hmm. A lot of feta. Uh, the Greek salad was just something I had all the time in the fridge. That was called lunch. This is so um, good. Yeah. Is that an olive? Yeah. Oh my There's God. Some Kalmadas in there. How Greek would it be without an olive? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. This. Or yeah, get in there and try this uh, this Philly. Okay. We I'm, like, I'm, like a, Philly? I'm I'm in love with this Philly cheese steak. I'm gonna fuck with the Philly. We need a knife. There is uh, one. Okay. Knife. Just just yeah. Just, yeah. Say, just cut that sucker in half. Right, yeah. You want to go for it? All right. I mean, in the meantime, I'm gonna take a bite out of one of these right here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's just so much food on this table. I, it's 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 obscene. You do this for the hookups, right? Because I would be doing this all the time. Let's start a fucking podcast. I, I never get hookups. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Tyler's my hookup. Tyler is the hookup. <laughs> He's mine too. Uh huh. All right, and we'll try uh, this. This looks like it's just going to be uh, impossible to get. Oh, there it goes. There goes the yolk. Oh, you got the yolk going. Uh huh. This is calling to me. I saw this online. I had to try this. So this is a maple bacon cream cheese. Yeah. And it also has American cheese on there. Oh, dude, that is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> God damn it, man. I, I want my entire life just to be bathed in that maple bacon cream cheese. Well, I feel the same way about the poutine here. I could bathe in that, like, gravy I mean, and shit. I had che- the fucking poutine here. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't even know, I don't even know where to begin. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm gonna lose, uh, this is Swedish. Not Swedish, but Swedish. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to go this. I'm going to do this. Here, full. Here. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, this the Philly go. is just. Okay. I love this sandwich. Oh, that was a good Philly. Now, my only complaint is that it's not the cheese whiz, man. Yeah, huh. we, uh, we offer it both ways. Oh, um, I just didn't. I, I just, you know, I always personally go provolone. So this like, is yeah, the, we'll this just... is like the Chicago cheesesteak, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. In my eyes, right? Mm-hmm. They call it Philly cheesesteak though here anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like that shit. We just steal it. Well, I think Gino's and Pat's is kind of like that. That's like the big component of the the war between those places, right? Like no, the, no, they're both one cheese whiz. Pro- oh, they both do whiz. Mm-hmm. Okay, but, I yeah. want to say it's um Gino's is like Vegas. Okay. Oh yeah, that's like the really classic like one. It, Pat, this is like a hot dog, um, not hot dog island, but what's it called? Super dog. Here's okay. what I'm concerned about. This is going down way too easy. 
Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I noticed that too. <laughs> yeah, that was really easy. Uh, it's it's not heavy. Once again, is that yeah, big? no, like say so we uh, we we just cook up some. Uh, we do the prime rib and house, and then my hands are coated in au jus. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then we just uh, we shave the prime rib, and then just kind of cook it up on the flat top with the peppers and onions. Ma'am. Can't go wrong. I, I'm about to make all gone. And yeah, I yeah, yeah. Bad... I don't think that's a good idea either. I, I think I should. Get I'm gonna take another bite of it, though. This, let me tell you, I've been I've done a few podcasts in my day. Thus far, this is my favorite one. Thank you. <laughs> it's the company and the food. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this. All right. I don't even know how. All right, so we're about to dig into the, I'm, the I'm special. Using the, uh, I'm using the hash browns as an amouche bouche. You know? <laughs> I love when you speak French. <laughs> I think all metal bands should have that kind of refinement. Hey, um, I can barely speak Greek, but oh I can God. swear at you in it. Tyler, how the hell am I supposed to eat this? Yeah. Well, we weren't supposed to cut it in half. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, for this purpose, you are. Right. Here we go. Yeah, just get in there. Alright. It's like a hateful breakfast, you know? It's like a breakfast that hates you back. <laughs> <laughs> you love it so much. But it's like, I'm going to kill you. But it's interesting. The, the, uh, the, the flavors, the maple, really, I mean, with the bacon and the, the egg and the... I've learned that maple goes with everything. Yeah, it kind of does. It really does. Um, American cheese. Mm-hmm. Because as Tyler explained to me once, and it, it always, has always stuck with me, it's the best melting cheese. You, you, you go to burger places and they put fancy cheeses on it. It doesn't melt as well. Nothing melts like American cheese. It's true. Yeah. I'm going through an entire stack of napkins. Yeah, this whole thing. <laughs> Forget it. And I didn't even wear black pants. What an idiot. You're metal. I know, right? <laughs> That's what you do. I just told you I was a shitty bean, bean metal. A terrible <laughs> bean metal. We have established that. And uh, <laughs> will you talk at length about the Atlas Moth on this podcast, which will be out in a couple weeks. So besides the sounds of us eating, which are sexy, uh, you'll be able to hear I us talk so. about uh, his band, Stavros' band, the Atlas Moth, and uh, professional wrestling and Marvel Comics. Hey, we're, we just started getting into comics, too. So. Yeah. All right, Tyler. We're going to have to stop the Facebook Live only because I, I don't want people to see me sweat that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Here, here's the problem. All this food is in front of me, and when it, this kind of food is in front of me, I just want to keep eating. Me too. Like, I, it's the whole clean, pay, clean play club thing. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, do. absolutely. Yeah. Totally. I, I, I was brought up um, having to finish. Yeah. I, I need to make all gone, so I'm trying to distract the conversation. Please do, because I'm about to die over here. <laughs> I need to breathe. All right, so don't what, be a wimp. <laughs> all right, That's what he always says. Don't be a wimp. All right, so what's your favorite so far? Mm, so, I'm going I'm to leave out the Atlas Moss sandwich. I did love that, though, mm-hmm. but I feel like that's a little bit too sucking yeah. my own dick kind of thing, right? right? It's no good. That, that's so, yeah. Um, I like elements of all of them. Yeah, yeah. But I think I'm with you on the Rocky Balboa... It, it, cheese steak is so it's easy to eat. Yeah, it's simple. You know, and, and I can really appreciate simple, especially I think maybe in light of everything being so complicated, mm-hmm. right? So that, I mean, but that donut mm-hmm. was really good. Every, how about this? I could see myself ordering the cheesesteak one. Mm-hmm. Whereas these other ones, I'm glad I got to try them. But like I said, I couldn't. As, as a 34-year-old man uh, that has a lot of pictures taken of him with his mouth wide open, <laughs> um <laughs> I don't think it would be uh, wise to order such things on my own. But And that, that's for the tasteful amateur porn you like to do. Of course. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, only tasteful. Okay, Tyler's back. I can't. Oh, we're going <laughs> to. I can't. I, grab the microphone, Tyler. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what the strawberry thing is, but that's that's it's calling to me. Peanut butter and jelly Kit Kat. Uh, what? Like that's a thing? Hey, grab the mic. What, what are we looking at here? Um... This one is a peanut butter and jelly Kit Kat cheesecake. It's just basically like peanut butter, strawberry jam, strawberry Kit Kats. I had no idea strawberry Kit Kats were a thing. Oh, yeah. I keep seeing the, the stands for them at Walgreens that are completely empty. So the only thing I can think of <laughs> is that Tyler has bought all of them. You do Uh-oh. do that, don't you? When, you, when yeah. there's a, like, an interesting new something or another, you do tend to... Yeah, order. I've been guilty of that. Uh-huh. Definitely. You're the guy that drives up the sale on eBay. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right, and then the chocolate. This looks like a more traditional epic. Delivery. That one is um, it's Stumptown Coffee and uh, Mocha Oreos. Mocha Oreos. 
Yep. And then, yeah, like I said, then it's got some uh, Stumptown coffee, like extract, or not extract, uh, like concentrate. Uh, How about that? We were just talking when you went away, Tyler, about how we are members of the Clean Plate Club. When we have food in front of us, we feel compelled to eat it. Yeah, like I said, last time Stavros did great. What? This, what? Today, though, I'm messing you guys up, like I said. Oh, my God. This one is a Samoa milkshake, and this one is a Fruity Pebble birthday cake milkshake. Oh, my God. I saw that online. All right, so, so as you're listening to this podcast, I, I want to be clear. I want to throw this out there to my girlfriend to make sure that she clears my browser history <laughs> in case I don't make it home. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be clear, there are two giant pieces of cake uh-huh. in front of us. As or this cheesecake. We barely, you gotta, you got to differentiate because cheesecake is a way more intense cake than, <laughs> than regular cake. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We barely had time to process what was put in front of us when the milkshakes were dropped. Like, I, I can't... This I, is a Fruity Pebbles milkshake? Yeah. Get the fuck um, We actually, uh, we just, we'll make, like, uh, cereal milk with different cereals. What? Um, so, yeah, we'll take, like, a... Cereal cereal just hold, cereal hold these yeah, up. essentially. So, yeah, what we'll do is we'll take, like, a... Uh, uh, that's bad. No, don't do that. We'll take, like, an entire <laughs> box of, say, Fruity Pebbles, or, like, this one we use the Samoa. Hold these two up. <laughs> Me? Or him? Yeah, you can both hold them up. All right. Um, but yeah, so like I said, that one, uh, the Samoa one also has Samoa flavored cereal, the Girl Scout cereal. So usually we'll take like a whole box of There's cereal. C- Samoa? Wait, wait. Yeah, they, up, they have girl, they've got <laughs> Girl Scout Samoa cereal and uh, Thin Mint cereal as well. Where do you get this stuff? At uh, Walmart, <laughs> usually. God damn, I only um, look at action figures at Walmart. You just look at the other things there. <laughs> wait, okay, let's See, talk we're about on the other sides of the store. <laughs> before, <laughs> yeah, obviously, right, yeah. Before Stavros came here to do this podcast, he said he got some action figures. I did. I went and bought some action figures. What did you, you get? I, uh, I collect wrestling action figures because I love wrestling. And no one else does. So they're really easy to collect. So uh, Walmart, I don't prefer to shop at Walmart. I know that they're a terrible corporation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Insert PC jargon here about hating Walmart. The fact of the matter is they have exclusive WWE action figures, guys. I have to shop there. Yeah. So I go to every one possible, uh, and I try to buy a couple extra to sell on eBay to, you know. Well done. Yeah. You know, you got to support the habit. Exactly. My, my son decided he's into indie wrestling now. He's Kick 15. Ass. This is all indie right here. Yes, I you know he he loves going to AEW. I go to AEW all the time. I, I'm surprised our paths we our paths probably have crossed. Yeah, yeah, probably have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just got tickets for NJPW and Ring of Honor that's coming up. Nice. We were gonna go. I, I had never been to Pro Wrestling Blitz. Oh, okay, it was in yeah. like Romeoville or something. Yeah, it's... and I looked. The prices were a little prohibitive for indies. Were they? I didn't. I didn't look at the prices. It was like thirty five bucks. It's a little expensive for indies. Uh, the indies are one of the things that kind of got me back. So for about. God, about 10, 12 years, 13 years, I didn't watch any wrestling because I hated John Cena. God, I fucking hate Now I kind of love him. I'm old. I'm getting old. I, I, do, I do love when his theme music plays I and the crowd too. goes, John, John Cena, Cena sucks. sucks. Oh, it's my favorite. I love singing that. But I've turned to love the guy for some reason. Though. He's a damn charismatic dude. The guy can talk. He's gotten pretty good with age, but he made me stop wrestling. He really did. And I got him to do the uh, NJPW stuff, the Japanese wrestling, yeah. which has just been fucking incredible, man. Holy shit. So I'm wearing like exclusively NJPW gear right now. Like yes, like, you are. I'm all about it, man. Hey, Tyler, do you do you watch wrestling at all? I don't, but uh, I'm familiar with New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's, um, uh, it sucked me right back in, man. I watch Access TV all the time. I don't that, get it. Yeah, that I watch that channel all the time. So I see that uh, that show sometimes, and I love Josh Barnett. Oh yeah, Josh who's an awesome. MMA fighter, and he's one of the announcers on that uh, on the wrestling show. Yeah, it's that that one's really entertaining. It's pretty intense, man. Yeah. It's kind of like 1980s WWE, but not cheesy way. Like See, more I, dangerous, I'd say, more violent. I, I'm a little younger than, or a little younger, a little older than both you guys. So I started watching wrestling on Sunday mornings. Uh, oh, yeah. AWA All Star Wrestling Sunday mornings on Channel 26, maybe. Right on. So I mean, we were talking about Hulk Hogan earlier. Like I remember watching Hulk Hogan when he first came to the AWA. Terry Bollea. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, you know, he was robbed. He was supposed to beat Nick Bockwinkel for the championship. Right. He was robbed, and then he went back to the WWF. I have all the AWA action figures that Remco put out. Yeah. Oh, my like, God. Yeah, I'm deep, dude. <laughs> I like, I, I probably told this story on the podcast before, but I remember I was maybe in eighth grade, and uh, AWA did a house show. Wow. A house show is a non-televised event, and they did it at the local high school, Niles North at, High School. Uh, at Niles North? Yes. What? So this is my mind right it now. was in the Niles North Gymnasium. This is probably 1982 or 83. Again, I'm a little bit older. And Jesse Ventura 
well, was one the of the body. Wrestlers. Jesse the Body Ventura. Better known to some of you younger folks as the governor of Minnesota at right. some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well known uh, author, conspiracy theorist. Yeah, conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, was it Jeff Fuel doesn't melt steel beams in Jesse Ventura's world, you know? Like that's for real. So I, I love Jesse Ventura then. He was I mean, he was all charisma, just all you know, he always looked cool and he had, oh, yeah. I mean, he was cut. I mean he was a badass looking guy. I made a poster, I drew a poster, I used to like to draw. Drew a poster of him body slamming Hulk Hogan. Whoa. He, I was sitting third row. It was the gymnasium of local high school. Right. It wasn't crowded. He grabbed the poster from me, walked it around the ring. It was the coolest thing ever. That is amazing. After the event, a couple of older kids confronted me in the hallway, told me that Jesse Ventura sucked, and ripped up my poster. What a bunch of dicks. What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> Did they not see that he obviously approved the design? There, but this was back when kayfabe was real and... It's good not real, no. <laughs> but I mean, people really believe that the bad guys were the bad guys, and right, the good yeah. guys were the good guys. And if you uh, supported the bad birds guys, trying to get murdered in Texas and shit. Exactly. Like if you supported Jesse Ventura, well, you're a bad dude. But yeah, it was total bullying. Wow. I went home crestfallen. Oh yeah, as one does. That would kill me. I hope they each picked up a meth habit and uh, are, are twice divorced. <laughs> you know, from the mean streets of Niles, Illinois. That's how it goes. <laughs> right. It's my. That's one of my stopping grounds. Right. So that's my. That, uh, so going back to what you're saying, I mean, that's kind of what I grew up oh, yeah, watching. You know, so I, I get where you're coming from with the um, indie stuff. Yeah, my older brother is 13 years older than me. Right. So uh, I got a little bit of that in me. Yeah. You know, like uh, he would buy all these tapes from AWA and WCCW. You know, yeah. Like, more or less, like I had an older brother and older sister, with both thirteen and eleven years older than me, respectively. And you know what? I just got sat down from the TV a lot. So all the '60s Marvel comics cartoons, all which the I used wrestling. to love. And if you've never seen these cartoons, they're incredible. They are animations of the actual comic book panels. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, really crude animations. They're fantastic. When I was a kid, I thought they were amazing. All these Jack Kirby comics yeah. come to life. I have all of them on VHS. Uh, from being a kid, and I've ha- I gotten them all on DVD. Like, you have no idea. Like, the, uh, that shit, I'm like a real big... I think a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you really love wrestling, and you really love metal, and you really love comic books. Like, I really love pop culture. Yeah. You know, I'm like a pop culture junkie. You know, like, I love Elvis, too. You know, like, I have a weird obsession with Have, you, have you been to Graceland? Oh, yeah, three times. Really? Yeah. Tyler, <laughs> have you been to Graceland? Yeah. It's... I didn't really know what to expect. I thought it was a very tasteful experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it gets a little wacky. <laughs> you know, I mean, but I thought it was cool. Like, yeah. not an Elvis fan, but I was very overcome with just the enormity of what that man's career was. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it's it's incredibly interesting too. I would say that I w- I was more of a an ironic or like I said, pop culture fan of Elvis yeah. for like my early you know junior high high school. And now as I've gotten older, I love Elvis. Like, actually, have delved deep into like his catalog. And really I, I, I can listen. It, I could listen to Polk Salad Annie any any day of the oh, week. Oh yeah, I mean, there's just so many awesome songs that I mean, whatever he wrote, he didn't write. But yeah, I'm a huge. I'm like, I really love pop culture, man. But I'm all those like, Sun Records singles oh, are so fantastic. elemental. Absolutely. I mean, I love all the Sun stuff. Carl Perkins, Johnny yeah. Cash. Also, co- like you know, older country has been a real big thing for me. You know, I, um, I agree. Yeah, I love it. Especially if I've gotten older. Like, I don't want to listen to a bunch of guys screaming into a microphone all the time. I do it myself. Right, you, you need know? you need a break. Absolutely, hip hop and old country. That's amazing. Drive my fucking girlfriend wild. <laughs> All right, so we're staring at we're, we're staring at desserts here. Uh, do you want to pick a shake? I I mean, oh, I can get you guys extra straws too, so you can try both. You know, and if you guys don't want to share germs, there we go. I understand we just met. We just met. <laughs> uh, I I want to try the strawberry cheesecake. Why don't you go for it, man? I mean, yeah, I'd like, say there's let's, two let's, forks let's, on each one. Yeah, here. And then, yeah, like I said, this one is like a Fruity Pebble cereal milk one, and then Samoa Girl Scout cookie oh milkshake. Lord. I'll tell you what. Oh, and like what, what I was telling you with this, like what we do is, like for the for the shakes, we'll take like an entire box of, say, Fruity Pebbles, and then we'll add it to a gallon of milk, and then we'll cover it, and we'll let it set overnight. And oh. then uh, the next day, once it's like very absorbed into the, the cereal, we, uh, we hit it with like a giant immersion blender. Like you would essentially like usually like use for a huge pot of soup or something like that that you want all one consistency. And then we'll blend it all up so that the milk just gets a lot thicker and then you, we just pretty much puree the cereal into the milk. Oh. And then we add that to the ice cream to thin it out a little bit, you know, like instead of putting plain milk into the shakes, you know. Stavros, try this. Yes, sir. <laughs> try the peanut butter and jelly. Um, you should try this one. <laughs> this is astonishing. Astonishing. Tales to astonish. <laughs> All right, this one is a lot lighter than I would ever expect. Me, 
I yeah, that one has Tyler's a good like amount of coffee. Man. Yeah. I think his magic is making these things that you're like, oh my god, like I can't, and and, then, and I don't feel like crap even right now. We shoveled so much food <laughs> into our faces, and we yes, didn't even we make did. a dent, really. No, we didn't. I, no, yeah, we tried, but um, very valuable. You walk effort. out of here, and you, and you don't feel like crap, which I think is a really, I think that's epic. Oh, I mean, thank I mean, you. you know, you, you oh, I see what I did there? I didn't even I realize I did it. Oh uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty impressive. Oh, these cheesecakes thing. are delicious. Yeah, they're absolutely ridiculous. Oh, thank you. I took two home last week, and I wound up eating one of them completely. The strawberry shortcake one. Okay. Um, and then I kept picking at my girlfriend's, and finally she <laughs> just gave up. This PB and J is. Uh, that is really good. This is something special. Oh, thank you. I'm a sucker for all things coffee. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm wearing baggy clothes today. <laughs> That's going to be the plan for tomorrow as well. Yeah, I yeah. Um, I might have to hit a Walmart on the way home, not looking for extra figures and looking for new pants. <laughs> right. Something stretchy, yeah. Something, something Hulk-like. Maybe you guys purple, got any starter pants? Purple <laughs> jeans of some sort. They're made of stretch material or something. Some Zubaz pants. Oh. That's right. <laughs> we don't get to wear leggings. I would wear leggings right now. It's such bullshit. I'm telling you, right. like, my girlfriend always looks so comfortable. I hate it. Tyler, this was. Uh, I'm never disappointed <laughs> when I come to Epic Deli. This is. I'm two for two, by the way. So. You'll never have a bad meal here. I'm, I'm getting that feeling. I'm batting a thousand. Now, it, it's nice to have Tyler, the owner of Epic Deli, curate your experience, but right. I, you could throw a dart at that menu and be good. So I've noticed. He probably just did that when yeah. back to do some darts. Oh, no, I've been thinking about what I was going to make you guys. I wanted to give you guys a few, like, new things with, like, the doing the Philly and... See, now that's what's up. And then, like I said, yep. James had been posting the uh, that King Argatron burger mm-hmm. the last couple days, so... I knew I had to bring that one out. This shape. The thick straws. I'm, I'm about to suck off all the... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you about to do? <laughs> all the ge- all are the we g- still doing phrasing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the gentlemen in line? What? <laughs> yeah, I feel like pl- places that aren't using bubble tea straws for milkshakes are just... Oh, it's genius. They're, they're years, it is. They're years behind. Yeah, when I saw it last time I was here, I was like... I literally said to my buddy Dave, I was like, dude, bubble tea straws for milkshakes, man. He goes, yo... That's the most genius thing ever. I'm like, right? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? Like, where I get milkshakes is right down the street where I get bubble tea. It's like, right there my entire life. I've never figured it out until now. I still don't understand bubble tea. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Because the tapi- you don't taste the tapioca. It just It's like, uh, I think it's like, you know, like smoking a cigarette for me isn't necessarily all the nicotine. And sometimes it's just something to do with my hand. So it's like kind of like a chewing gum. It's like a, it's like a throat exercise? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got the you got the, the sucking off and throat jokes <laughs> down down pat to yeah. that. <laughs> I don't know why you guys think that's funny, but uh, all right. So Tyler, uh, Tyler, Tyler's. I think she's telling them to steal third. Yeah. <laughs> we we just stole their signs. Um, <laughs> uh, Epic Deli is located where? Uh, we are at twenty six sixteen Shade Court S C H A I D uh, in McHenry, Illinois. Um, maybe about like 20 minutes or 10 minutes from the border of Wisconsin, about an hour from Chicago. Yeah, it's about an hour from Chicago. I and mean, go, go Hour and a half. Okay, go yeah, at depending where in the city <laughs> you're at. Yeah. Go at a non-busy <laughs> travel time. But, I mean, really, just shoot up 94. It's a really nice drive, actually. Uh, both times. Last, last, I've been here town twice in uh, two weeks. Um, it's a nice way to, like, I mean, I love the city, and I'm a total city kid, and I fucking hate the outdoors. And camping and all that shit terrifies oh, me. I watch way too many horror movies. But I'll tell you what, it's been a really, it was a beautiful, serene ride out here both times. Very refreshing. <laughs> if you, you know, and for people who are coming from the city, I, I've tried to encourage people to come to Epic. I'll show them the menu and say, you got to go. You know, make a day of it. Yeah. Go go to the McHenry uh, drive-in. Go for dinner at Epic, early dinner at Epic, go see a drive-in movie. Or go to Epic for dinner and go to the Volo Auto Museum, which is kind of cool. Uh, during the day. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do out here. And even that little downtown by the river. like the, Oh, yeah, on Green Street and yeah, downtown looks, McHenry here. It looks kind of cool. Yeah. I uh, chose to shop for WWE action figures at every various Walmart I passed on the way out here. And I'm sure there's many. Heck yeah. yeah. Tons and sing. You don't have to mean the city. you got to make these trips worthwhile, you know? <laughs> so I love this place. I, I'm almost at the point of needing a nap. Uh, Stavros. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, the Atlas Moth. The Atlas Moth. Uh, as you said, you're dangerously close to a new album early next year. February 9th, as of right now, as of August 2017. February 9th, 2018. Uh, album's called Coma Noir. It is um, a very adult-sounding record that's very pissed off. 
I'm very excited to put it out. I can't it's wait. not on prosthetic records. And then you have a gig in October, right? Yes, October 6th, we're opening up for Perturbator, which is really bizarre, but uh, we're getting weird. We're getting old. See now. I love it. Your band's Thank awesome. You. Thank and you, man. It, it's so cool it. hanging out with you. Uh, Tyler, you, you, as said, you're a genius. Your food... <laughs> you're, uh, An evil genius. You know, he's I, like he's definitely like got like a, some sort of like smoke filled ball in the back where it's like, let me conjure up a recipe for yeah, you. There's something a little <laughs> sadistic about what he does. Um, but as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, as we're recording this, we're recording this on August 13th, right? Uh, we're at the precipice of world war. If if the bomb starts to drop right now. I'd be okay with that because I had a really delicious meal and I've enjoyed the company. So yeah, it's yeah, all it's good. good. <laughs> yeah. I can so, definitely, you know what? Bomb driving back home? Yeah, kind of toss up right now. You know, you, you always want to go out on a high note, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is it. Oh, nap is definitely going to be the high note right yeah. now. You know, that's just that's the epicenter of the trip, you know? <laughs> right. like, we, we fall asleep on the way home and driving off the rail. Oh, my God. Uh, so, Tyler, thank you for uh, the food and the hospitality. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you for coming. Yeah. And, and Stavros, thank you for rocking. You're awesome. Anytime, man. Thank you very much for having me on.